and three on the Seminoles for the year. It is the first time since Bobby Bowden only back in 1978 did his team have a record of only four and three to start the season. And as far as Maryland fans are concerned, four and oh on the year, they have been very tough to beat here at Bird Stadium in College Park, Maryland. Hi everybody, Ron Franklin, and welcome to College Park. A lot going on this week, and it's been a very difficult week for the winningest head football coach in Division I football. Bobby Bowden, letters being sent to the president of SSU, uh, suggesting that he step down. National surveys wanting to know if Bobby Bowden should step down. I would remind you, Florida State last year did win the Atlantic Coast Conference. They also played in a BCS Bowl game, one of only eight teams to do that. And Ed Cunningham joins me on the telecast tonight. And Ed, doggone it, I've, maybe I'm just not smart enough. I don't understand all this. I'm not only bumfuzzled by the thing, but it, it really kind of ticks me off. Bobby Bowden, I mean, it's stupid. Well, how things were handled when it got public, I think, got a little bit out of hand. If you have some issues, you might want to just get on a plane and fly up and talk about it. But it reminds me a lot, Ron, of what happened at Penn State a few years ago. Joe Paterno went through, through this exact same thing, and he said, be patient. We have good players. Last year, they went 11-1 and one with those players. Bobby has the same situation. A lot of injuries. This is a very young team, but they have a lot, a lot of talent in that freshman class. Well, as if we we didn't need another bombshell dropped on us. We got one about 15 or 20 minutes ago. Uh, it's going to be Xavier Lee starting at quarterback tonight rather than Weatherford because of tendonitis in Weatherford's right ankle. This is a very difficult change for Florida State to make at this point in the season. This offense has been built around Weatherford, who had the bad foot on Wednesday, had a tough time in practice. He just looked awful in warm-ups. So they're going with Lee. Let's not forget that at the beginning of last year, everybody thought Xavier Lee maybe should have been the starter. This guy was Mr. Football in the state of Florida in 2003. More athletic guy. And with this win, we're going to see tonight, Ron, expect Florida State to run the ball even with their quarterback more. Well, as you can tell, a lot of enthusiasm here tonight in College Park. Maryland as the Terrapins take the field. Here's Janine Edwards. Janine. Ron, Maryland coach Rob Friedgen took the reins as offensive coordinator just this year. He knows that his offense must make some big plays tonight against a speedy Florida State defense, but more importantly, they cannot turn the ball over. In the last two seasons, the Terps have had 33 interceptions. So far this year, they've had six. They lack experience at wide receiver, which has limited Friedgen's ability to call for risky downfield plays, and that was especially evident last week when of the Terps' 50 offensive plays just nine of them were passes Friesian said I would love nothing more than to bust this thing wide open with some big plays in our passing game but it's our running game that's been making it happen and Ron with 40 mile an hour wins tonight that running game may be the way to go Janine will wait and see but I wouldn't be surprised at that at all as you take a look 42 degrees supposed to drop down into the 30s 27 miles an hour and the Weather Bureau just sent an advisory saying light rain and windy some gusts up to 40 miles an hour and I can tell you in watching these two teams Ed, we stood together downstairs watching the punters the place kickers the quarterbacks trying to throw and it's virtually impossible from the right to the left that is right into the teeth of the wind and the thing quarterbacks talk about with a cold ball Ron sometimes you have a hard time gripping it of course we know with Kenny Rogers he got some help gripping the ball the other night and in a game like tonight if that ball slips out it wobbles into the wind it's an interception going the other way well then tonight we'll cover the Bobby Bowden scenario including coaches thoughts on his critics his son Jeff's offensive coordinating duties uh, with Lou Holtz also taking on the experiences working side by side with his son and also we'll talk to the president of Florida State University and get his take on the recruiting situation. Good luck at Coach Bowden right there. And as we talked when we were finishing our meeting uh, today about how much of a change in strategy and game plan this weather would actually make tonight. I think it'll be a big difference, of course. Now you have two issues if you're Jeff Bowden, the offensive coordinator, and Ralph Friedgen, who Janine just said is serving as his own offensive coordinator this year. Into that win run, of course, Florida State now with a new quarterback and Xavier Lee. But uh, Coach Friedgen has been very conservative lately. Gone, they have three very good running backs, so they've gone almost exclusively to the ground game. May not affect them as much tonight as it will Florida State. 
Our referee tonight is Jack Childress. This is a very good veteran crew of the Atlantic Coast Conference. And we're trying to find out exactly he was on the other side visiting with Coach Bowden. Now has come over to visit with Coach Friedgen on the near sideline. And we don't know exactly what the problem is. Florida State won the toss and they have deferred. I think there may have been some confusion with, you know, typically on a day where there is no win run, you don't really care which direction you're going to be going. But both of these teams very concerned about the win. And perhaps Ralph not happy with the direction they're going to be going on offense to start. This is the series history 15 and 1 Florida State leads it. The Terps won 20 to 17 over number five Florida State. That was the last game that was played here in the stadium. And last year a very good game down in Tallahassee. Florida State having to score two touchdowns in the fourth quarter to come back and beat Maryland. All right, we're, I've just been handed a note, a correction on... Did Florida State defer or did they not? Well, this is a big enough deal for both teams to get right, Ron. Well, I mean, this ball game, yeah. I think, is going to be won and lost with the Absolutely. weather here tonight. Uh, field position is going to be absolutely paramount and as bad as this wind is I mean we saw guys standing kicking with the wind and easily hitting punts of 75 and 80 yards we saw the ball absolutely being just die after it was hit and going about 15 yards into the wind yeah anything outside of a PAT is going to be a long distance field goal if you're going from right to left. And again, I don't know that uh, Jack Childress and his crew would be spending this much time, Ron, unless the weather were this much of a factor. Well, Jack Childress, the referee and his crew, they have uh, broken up their huddle, and everybody seems to be satisfied that the way the coin toss went, that's the way they are lined up. And I would think that it would be Maryland facing the win first with Florida State having won the toss good. always want the offense struggling early the defense with all their adrenaline may get a good jump on a ball that's going to float and Florida State very quick although young they still have tons of speed on the outside some of what they call the blackout tonight thousands of black t-shirts handed out to the Maryland student body and they are everybody has got one on this evening Josh Wilson is the deep man Graham Gnow a senior out of Pensacola will kick it off for the Seminoles. And here's the boot. And this one, as expected, is going to go about eight or nine yards deep into the end zone. So it will be Maryland coming on the field first. And that means that we will get a chance to look at uh, Sam Hollenbach. Outstanding young guy we had a chance to visit with yesterday. Incredibly bright young man. He'll get his degree in mechanical engineering in the spring and admitted to us that sometimes he thinks a little too much while he plays well <laughs> Ralph as his own offense coordinator has been working on him very hard to, to trust his reads and I'll be surprised if it's not handoff right handoff left and maybe a screen you might be able to sneak a screen in but nothing down the field right now Lance ball starts out of tailback Tim Chasa is the fullback that's Chasa in motion and they're going to throw that first down they swing it out pulled the tackle five yards as 10 counted off at 11 yards and let's take a look at Maryland's offense in this ball game tonight 246 yards passing per ball game then Maryland 25.7 points of ball game second in the conference four players from Maryland DC area Hayward Bay Hanos Edward Williams and Jared Gaither, the huge offensive tackle on the run. Very long count. They go with the running play straight ahead. A couple of yards. Jay Thaxton is the man who is there to make the tackle on ball. And here is a look at the Florida State starters on defense, allowing only 79.9 rushing yards a ball game. That's third in the conference. And they start four freshmen. Thacker, a true freshman. Dakota Watson, a true freshman. 
Uh, Myron Roll, a true freshman, and also Jamie Robinson at right corner. He actually is a redshirt freshman, but he's still a freshman. <laughs> Mickey Andrews, happy to have a guy out there who's actually been through the program one year. A lot of guys like Buster Davis Sr. is going to have to make sure these guys just line up correctly sometimes. Rolls the pocket, wants to throw. Smart play, gets it off to his fullback, Corey Jackson, makes the catch. And he is not going to have the first down as he will step out of bounds just across the 35. Well, we'll take a look at the impact players. And, of course, the three running backs will play a huge role tonight. Both rows we've seen tonight very short so far for Hollenbeck. Ball and Lattimore have stepped up because Josh Allen, at the end of 2004, blew out his knee, had the red shirt last year. They'll share the running. Ball and Lattimore getting the bulk, but Josh Allen getting so much closer to 100%. And he really was. Allen was the home run hitter for this offense back in 2004 and 2003. He is on the field right now, getting closer to 100%. Blitz coming, pass over the middle, and then out of the hands of his intended receiver, Hayward Bay. Darius, a redshirt freshman out of just up the road, Silver Spring, Maryland. So it's bring, gonna bring up a fourth down. Now, the line of scrimmage is the 38, and we'll get a good test right here of exactly how far Egokeza can kick the football. Right now, Davis is only about 25 yards from the line of scrimmage. He knows this is going to be a short kick. Gets a good pass, and here's the boot. Very high, and now here comes the win. It is just died, and the deep man runs away from it, takes a huge Maryland bounce and is going to go dead at the 15-yard line. Chris Davis is the man downfield to touch it. So 47 yards into the win. When we return, Bobby Bowden answers his critics. Good look at Adam Potlish. He is the man who booted the ball into the win. Good for 47 yards. And with that boot, it has Florida State taking over with very poor field position. Xavier Lee doesn't pronounce it Xavier. It is Xavier. Starts at quarterback, pitches back to Lorenzo Booker, and he is going to be knocked out of bounds on the far sideline after a gain of two. Coach Bobby Bowden, the all-time win leader in college football history, knows how to knock back his critics. Do you think that I would let a fan out there or a sports writer tell me who to hire? and tell me who's doing the job. You think I'll let somebody do that? If I do, I should not be in coaching. Uh, Mar Marv Levy said it best. Any coach who listens to fans is going to be sitting with them pretty soon. <laughs> Lee rolls the pocket, throws it complete. That's Jocelyn Shaw, a junior out of Plant City, Florida. And that's going to be a first down out to the 41. It is good for 24 yards on the play. And of course, to Cody Fagg, who hurt his ankle earlier in the week, was not able to play as well as Drew Weatherford. And Xavier Lee, you see the athleticism getting out of the pocket. A little different quarterback than Drew Weatherford. And right now, Jeff Bowden's got to take advantage of this win. And I'll tell you, you can't really tell until he stands up around the lineman. This is a very large young man. He is 6'4", 227 pounds out of Daytona Beach. Flag goes down as a running play. Now here comes the second flag in. Corey Niblock may have moved a little quickly. And in the late flag it came in. I don't know if that's going to be holding or what. Right snap. False start. Right guard. Offense. Five yards. You know, Ron, that's one thing that's very difficult to do with a new quarterback in there is the snap count. Florida State offense, 246 yards passing per ball game that leads the conference. And four seniors, Booker, Chris Davis, Mario Henderson, and Corey Niblon. So the penalty stepped off, and it's a first down and 15. Running play, breaks a tackle. It's going to pick up five and get back to the original line of scrimmage. It'll be second down and 10, and Aaron Henderson on the stop. Maryland's defense, 348 total yards allowed per ball game. That's the second most in the ACC. And the three leading tacklers are David Holloway with 39. Wesley Jefferson leads the team with 65 and 48 tackles for Aaron Henderson, second. 
Henderson, the brother of E.J. Henderson, now in the NFL, the middle linebacker position of Maryland the last few years has been sensational. These guys trying to fill in. Lee, great protection, drills the ball. It's going to be overthrown. Chris Davis, the man that he wanted, and that's the direction where you have to be really careful with the ball sailing on you with the wind. And that'll happen quite a bit as we take a look at Florida State's impact players. Of course, we mentioned Dakota Fag is out a tall receiver. Chris Davis, not the tallest guy, but in a game like this, Ron Lorenzo Booker is going to have to be key. When Florida State gets the ball going back the other way against the wind, throw some screens, get this guy in space. And Chris Davis, with the injury to Fag, this guy's got to step up his game, especially right now with the wind at Florida State's back in third down. Third down of 10. They need to take it to the 49 of Maryland. Zings it across the middle. Big car. The wide receiver at six foot, six and a half. Ball is down, and it is loose at the 49 of Florida State. Who got it? It is Maryland football. First turnover of the night. And it was recovered by Rick Costa. And this is the thing, you know, talking to Bobby Bowden about this team, he said, you know, if it were a bunch of seniors and juniors making all these mistakes, I'd wonder about my job too. But we've got a bunch of young guys, and Carr, the sophomore, on a cold night, the ball is hard. You've got to hang on it, onto it. And the Seminoles, minus six in turnovers on the season so far. Not so good. Jeremy Navarre is the man who knocked the ball loose. So let's see what Maryland can do as far as taking over with good field position in Florida State territory. Ball just outside the 48 yard line. No score. We're about to go under 11 minutes to play opening quarter. Hollenbach threw it well behind his intended receiver. Had him open, but just put a little too much zing on it, and Isaiah Williams couldn't go be behind his back and make the catch. And Isaiah Williams is a young man that Ralph Regan is really looking for big things from. And remember all of the receivers that left last year, of course, Vernon Davis went very high in the draft, but Melendez, Fenner, JoJo Walker, all those guys are gone. 76% of the receptions from last year's team are gone, and some of these young receivers are still trying to figure this offense out. Offensive coaches say that they need Isaiah Williams to step up and come through. He could really help them. Sophomore out of Montclair, New Jersey. Quarterback falls down as he makes the handoff, and straight ahead is Lance Ball, and he will pick up just about four yards on the play. Pay attention to see how you could get a thousand dollars in your pass over the middle ball is knocked down and here comes a flag now a second flag from deep in the secondary uh, they're going to get Jamie Robinson a little early and if you notice Ron all of these throws are low driving throws every every throw that Ralph Friedgen has called has been a low driving throw. I guess he figures down low, the wind's not as bad. We've seen a couple of kicks get hung up, but he does have a big quarterback. Hollenbach at six foot four, 200 and almost 20 pounds, has plenty Pass of ball. interference, number 20 of the defense, 15 yard penalty. That's an automatic first down. And again, that's one of those freshmen out there for Mickey Andrews. Yeah. Jumped on that receiver a little too early. So you heard the call there by Jack Childress, our referee for tonight. Mickey Andrews looking on the longtime defensive coordinator for the Florida State Seminoles and the new line of scrimmage is the 29 and a half yard line of Florida State. Maryland took this ball over at around the 48 yard line following a fumble by Greg Carr of the Seminoles. Little reverse action. It's Lattimore 30 25 and because of an outstanding speed defensively Kevin McNeil got outside the defensive end and forced him out of bounds. And the one thing that coaches talk about with Keon Lattimore is when he's running hard and reckless, he's good. It's when he starts getting into his head and thinking a little too much. Well, on that one, you don't have to think, Rob. You take the ball, <laughs> and you know the guys in the garnet and gold can fly, so you just turn the corner and go as hard as you can. Well, as head coach said, I want him to do one thing. I want him to stay aggressive in his ball carry. Two tight end alignment for Maryland. Second down, they need to take it to the 20-yard line. No score, but the Turks knocking on the door. Ball 
straight ahead. He'll have the first down. He's going to take it down around the 18-yard line. Roger Williams is there to make the tackle. And let's go down to the sideline. Janine, what do you have for us? Well, Ron, Keon Lattimore, number 21 from Maryland, has kind of a built-in coach with his older brother that would be seven-time Pro Bowler, two-time Defensive Player of the Year, and Super Bowl MVP Ray Lewis. Ray told me Keon is a natural with a football in his hands. And, guys, I'll finish after the play. It is a first down, Janine. The ball resting just outside the 18-yard line. That's Pinos, the tight end in motion. They go to the running play. Lane breaks it open. 15, 10, down to the 5. And Lance Ball is almost into the end zone before being forced out of bounds. It's a gain of 15. Excellent job by this offensive line. You know, Ralph Regan, who was an offensive lineman here at Maryland during his playing days, talked about pad level last week against NC State. He said these guys were playing a little too high, so they worked all week on that, and that time a huge hole on the right side. Good job by the fullback getting up there and sitting that one. Corey Jackson, number 38, the freshman out of Morgantown, West Virginia, through the block. Roger Williams knocking out of bounds. Ball now four carries for 26 yards. Little bootleg. Flag is down, throws it complete. Touchdown, Gronkowski, the tight end. Now let's see who the marker is against across the way. I think it was Buster Davis, Ron. Buster Davis was coming on an outside blitz, and I think he got into the neutral zone and, and then broke contain as well. The senior made two mistakes on that play. Touchdown, Maryland. Here's another look. Watch right on the outside. There's Buster Davis. He's going to come. He's in the neutral zone. That's a good call. It's very close, but he's got to stay as deep as the ball, Ron. When you blitz off the backside, you've got to know where that ball is, and he allowed Hollenbach to get around him too easily. Dennis with the extra point attempt. It is up and good, and it's 7 to nothing. So a miscue on the part of Greg Carr, the wide receiver for the Florida State Seminoles, coughed up the football, and it turns into seven points for Maryland. Let's take a break. Made from chunks of lump crab meat, mouth-watering. <laughs> Boy. Hard to pass up when you come up this way. Yeah, I'm from Northern Virginia, and the, the secret is they don't use the breadcrumbs. Everywhere else in the country, there here it's just all sauce and meat. So it's going to be Roberts who will kick it off, kicking into the win. And we were talking during the timeout. I hope it stays, but it looks as though hasn't stopped but the wind has subsided considerably right now and they're going to kick it on the ground and it's going to be picked up at the 29 yard line and it looks like uh, Charlie Graham is uh, the guy who got over there on the football well some of the headlines this week that uh, had things really swirling Bowden taking criticism in stride uh, boost for Bobby FSU coach responds to his critics uh, all a eyes uh, blame on Jeff Bowden and Bowden counsel staying positive well there's been a lot of talk for the last several years about Jeff Bowden and possibly the change at uh, offensive coordinator we could talk more about that because I think there might be a fairly painless solution uh, you know this offense may get some outside help if they can look to the outside. Anton Smith breaks it open. 40, 45, and all the way out to the 49-yard line. It's a gain of 21 as Isaiah Gardner made the tackle. And a good example as Wesley Jefferson, a very good tackler, just couldn't hang on to it. Anton Smith, very good inside runner. Booker more of an outside guy, a screen guy, but Smith very good between the tackles and has great balance. That's one of those examples of a defender trying to hit too hard rather than breaking down and locking his arms to make sure that he secures the running back. That's about goes to Smith. And Smith is going to have five, now maybe six yards on the play. Out at the 45 as Christian Varner shoved him out of bounds there. You know, Ron, I had a situation in college at the University of Washington where 
Gary Pickle, our offensive coordinator, they brought in a co-offensive coordinator because Don James, our head coach, just wanted a little bit of injection from the outside. And, uh, you know, I know Jeff has been in that position for a long time, and it would be a demotion, but you, you have the chance to bring in some outside people sometimes, especially when a program's been like this for a long time, and maybe just a little injection of someone, maybe some West Coast offense coming in, and I think it's somewhere that you can handle this. They need four for the first down, and they're very close to it. In fact, I think they're going to pick it up. Marcus Wimbush uh, is there defensively to make the tackle. I, I would suggest to you that, and it's not just Coach Bowden, but I've seen veteran coaches handle this the same way. When people start sending edicts and all these suggestions, uh, the back gets bowled a, a little higher. And I, I think things would be better served if uh, everybody calmed down a little bit. Allowed sanity to prevail, and you know, he let him make up his mind. He's not going to do anything to embarrass himself or Florida State University. That's the most important thing. Look like uh, Perikowski is uh, the man who there he is. Has prior to the snap, false start number 19 of the offense, five yard penalty, and still first down. Kasparowski is the man who jumped too soon. He's a freshman out of Land O'Lakes. Yeah, you see him leaning, couldn't get back in a stance. His dad was a three-year starter at Florida State University at linebacker, and I would suggest to you that his father caused a fumble that helped create the biggest win, the first huge win of Bobby Bowden's career, and it came against the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Short drop to throw. Quick out, got it complete, and that's Shaw. And Joslyn Shaw forced out of bounds around the 35 yard line. Now, Florida State on this sequence right here, changing up the play calling, chipping away a little bit more instead of going after the bigger chunks. Well, in Weatherford, a lot of the throws have been down the field, double moves, some post, things like that. But Xavier Lee getting into a little bit of a rhythm and talk about tough duty for Xavier Lee. You run with the second team. He's been running with the second team receivers, offensive line, running backs. For the better part of the last season and a half, finds out just before the game he's going to start. We've already seen some mess ups with the snap count. 42 yards, three of four throwing. And that time I think it's Mario Henderson. We've already got Corey Niblock who jumped a little early. Right the snap, false start, 62 of the offense, five yard penalty. And let's check down on the sideline with uh, Janine Edwards, and she has more on Weatherford, the injured starting quarterback. Yeah, Ron, it appears that uh, Drew Weatherford injured his left ankle on Wednesday of this week in practice. It was a touch-and-go situation. He actually came out on the field this evening before the game and did warm up, but as a precaution, they put Xavier Lee in, but Weatherford can play if needed. You know, one thing we do need to clarify, it actually is not an injury. It is tendonitis is what the doctors are calling it. Middle screen, big opening for Anton Smith. And he is going to have the ball just outside the 25-yard line. Philistine making the tackle. Anton Smith has given him an injection of uh, some quick moves right here. There's only been two 100-yard rushing games on the season, and Smith has one of them against Rice. Very explosive back. And he's worked his way into the lineup. Of course, Lorenzo Booker, the senior, expect everybody expected him to be the guy who get all the carries. But Smith has really fought to get himself some playing time. Two tight ends of the ball game for the Seminoles. They trail at seven to nothing, and now driving their deepest penetration of the evening. Little counter tray, and here comes Smith. Stiff arm and a nice open field tackle by Christian Varner, who was able to get past the stiff arm and stop the speedy Smith. And now it's going to be. What a uh, about five yards to pick up the first down. Smith built a whole lot like Warwick Dunn. Not a big guy, but do not underestimate his power. What a great stiff arm at the end of that run. He's much stronger than his 188 pounds would make you think. You know what his nickname is? He's out of Pahokee, Florida. But his nickname is Deuce because he wore number two in high school. But he can't do that at Florida State because there's another guy by the name of Primetime who uh, <laughs> that number has been retired. So he is now six. Passing the flat. Got it complete. That's good for the first down for Chris Davis. And he'll be shoved out of bounds just inside the 10. First and goal, Florida State, as Gardner was there defensively. 
I'm actually very surprised, Ron, at some of the timing throws so far by Xavier Lee. This is just an outcut by Davis. And the ball's there on time in a hurry. Lee holds the all time high school passing record in the state of Florida over 9,000 yards. So don't think that Lee is just an athlete back there at quarterback. He can sling it. Short side of the field, they run it into the boundary. At the five, two, one, did he get in to score? They say no, he's out of bounds at the one. Christian Barner saved the touchdown. Joe Surratt, number 32, is uh, the man who threw a paving block, and now we understand the official on the other side of the field said yes, it was a touchdown. So the Seminoles now within one of tying up this ball game. Well, if Smith keeps running this hard, he might be able to call Deion Sanders and see if he can get number two. Yep, he <laughs> hit the pylon. Yeah, that's, that's a good call. What he said, he told <laughs> the play-by-play -play announcer for Florida State, he said, now just say six for six. <laughs> so it was six for six on that carry right there. Gene Deckerhoff, the longtime veteran announcer of Florida State, I asked if he was going to use that, and I wonder if maybe just a moment ago he did. We are tied at seven a piece. Gary Sismatia knocks home the extra point. When we come back, Lou Holtz talking about the battles. Lattimore in a tailback. Gets the handoff, and wow, he is hit behind the line of scrimmage and knocked down for a loss on that play. There's another true freshman, Myron Roll, who came in for spring practice. Ron, you cannot explain how much of a difference it makes for true freshmen who come out of high school and go through spring drills. They get a semester on campus. They get to learn the defense. It's a very bright young man. He's a pre-med major. Four-point student. Yeah, he's a great student, and uh, that the, extra time on campus is huge. One of the coaches, I said, well, you know, tell me some more things about uh, Roland. And they said, just make him sound like the greatest kid in the world because he is. He is an all-honors program. As this run comes 25-30 out to the 32-yard line, and that is good for the first down and a gain of 12 as Tony Carter is the man who forced him out of bounds. Corey Jackson with an outstanding block. And let's check down on the sideline again with Janine. Janine? Well, Ron, we touched on before Keon Lattimore's brother being Ray Lewis, and it's interesting that Ray has given Keon quite a bit of uh, help and guidance and direction in his playing. He said, I talked to him Wednesday night. I told him I'm so proud of him. I gave him some hints on how to improve. And guys, I will finish this again after the play. Okay. First down from the 32 yard line. Lattimore again bounces it outside. Bad pursuit angle on the part of the corner. And he is going to take this beyond Tony Carter and a distance more. 28 yards as Carter came up and he was pursuing from a way too stingy angle. It's the exact same run that we saw Lance Ball bounce to the outside. There's just bad force. The safety comes down, Ron, and he just gets buried in the pile. The safety safeties, when they're coming up, Ron, they have to see the hole just like the running back does and fill the hole that's there. And I think part of the advice that Ray Lewis gave to his younger brother was, when you see a big hole like that, run really fast. Well, I'll tell you what, there was a guy that has uh, a number 78 on his back, Jared Gaither, who threw an outstanding block for Maryland. Jared is 6'9", 328 pounds, was an outstanding high school basketball player, and now he is becoming an outstanding offensive lineman. As that running play will be stopped for a loss of two. And Janine, that's uh, have you complete that story that you have started a couple of times. Yeah, well, what Ray was telling Keon was, carry the ball in your right hand. Make sure you're using the stiff arm. And he said, make sure you're getting away from people. He said, don't let one guy bring you down. He thinks, Ray does, thinks that the Terps are playing great right now. And he said, he, Keon and his roommate, who happens to be Lance Ball, have a great one-two punch going. Well, they also have a good relationship because Lance said yesterday, we're all brothers, we are all teammates, and uh, we don't get jealous over the number of uh, carries that we get. Here comes a pass, Lattimore to the near sideline, and in the open field, we'll take it inside the 35 and down to around the 30. Buster Davis finally makes the tackle, but that is a gain of 12 yards. And Ralph Friedgen's offense has really got him to and throwing right now. Boy, this is an excellent job by Lattimore. Watch as he gets down here. Look, it's higher right in front of him, and he just stays right behind him. 
It's not that Hire was really knocking people around too much, but if you get in behind him, now the defense has to come around that big offensive tackle. That's great patience by Lattimore to get up behind the lead blocker. So Ball checks back into the ball game, replacing Lattimore at tailback. We're tied at seven, and Maryland driving again. And they give it to Ball. Bounces off one tackler, then will be stopped at the 30. And it's going to be a gain of about a half yard as Latroy Guyon is there to make the tackle. Sophomore out of Stark, Florida. He has been had a problem with an ankle and also with a shoulder injury. And when we talked earlier in the week to Buster Davis, one of the only seniors on the entire roster for Florida State, much less on defense, he was talking about how hard these guys from Maryland run. And Lance Ball last year actually had a run where he ran right over the top of Buster Davis. And of course, Ralph Region last night in their big hoop it up meeting showed that to the entire squad to get them ready. <laughs> Always Florida State showing uh, blitz from the outside. And here they come. And they run right where the blitz came from. No. Little trickeration here as Okindo has the ball. And a flag is down back at the 39 yard line. Well, you're going to get an incidental face mask, I believe, on Dakota Watson. And how many times can you say it? Another freshman mistake. D D Dakota Watson had this play dead to rights, Ron. As a Kendo got this ball. We have an incidental face mask at the five yards from the end of the run. Foul against the defense. That's a first down. Gino Hayes, who is out because of an injury replaced by Watson, another freshman that has to be in there. And Watson was just, just overran the play. Eighth play of the drive. It all started back at the 20-yard line of Maryland. Tied at seven and with 3.13 showing on the clock, they're trying to go in front in this opening quarter. Hainos, the big tight end, goes in motion. Lattimore hit at the line of scrimmage. He'll have a couple of yards to the five. And that is the end of the way as Latroy Guyon again coming in to make a tackle. You know, Ron, it's worth mentioning that that wind. It's not completely gone, but it's not. It's about 70, 75 percent less than what it was. Sure so, feels like it. Yeah. Is. And so Ralph Region going into the closed end of the stadium, not affected if they want to throw a fade. They can do that, whereas before, I don't think you could have made that throw uh, at the beginning of the game. In motion, number 80 was moving forward. That's a snap. That's a five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. So the, the Terps have been pretty free of mistakes so far. That is the first time they've been penalized tonight. But instead of taking the ball down to the five-yard line, the five-yard stepped off, and they now have it back at the 12. First down and goal 12 yards away. Now, Lattimore's in the game, and he's been the hot hand so far. I would think some type of either run or quick toss to him. It looks like they've got power to the right. Take it that direction. Here comes pressure in the middle linebacker. Will sack the quarterback. Hollenbach tackled by Buster Davis. Davis all over him, and that is minus 11 on the play. All of a sudden, they went from having a second down and goal from the five. They are now 23 yards away. And Davis now being able to move around, he's just going to get right on the run. As soon as he reads it, he's up the field. Remember, he was the one who let Hollenbach break contain earlier on the touchdown, and that time he was not going to be fooled. He read it dead to rights, did not even buy into that fake gate. Great read by the senior. 64 tackles, set second in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Second down and goal this time from the 23, and it's a draw play. And that's going to go for a couple, and that is it as Lattimore gets the carry. But boy, the Seminoles were not fooled on that one. Rodney Gallon there to make the tackle. And if you're watching Maryland for the first time this year, don't be shocked at the conservative call. Ralph Region took over this offense. Just about every significant person who caught the ball has gone off of last year's team. And his first year of calling play since 2000 at Georgia Tech, admittedly gotten very conservative. Janine talked about at the open of the show how it's all gone to the run for this offense. Back in the ball game is Josh Allen, number 33. Now, two years ago, he had a 72-yard touchdown run against these Seminoles. 
I don't think that kind of speed has come back to him yet after the knee problem that he had. As the ball is given straight away to Allen, spins around and is going to be stopped at the 20. It's a gain of one. And Nephi Moffitt, a sophomore out of Palm Bay, Florida, is there to make the tackle. Some scattered boos mm -hmm. from the cheering section across the way. But Ralph Bregen hates turnovers worse than anybody in the world. They have fought so hard, Ryan. They really changed that tide. And that's what's got them at five and two. And, and controlling their own destiny in the ACC is not turning the ball over. 38-yard attempt, and this is into the win. Last week, he was the player of the week in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Ball is down. Kick has plenty of distance, and he got it. Dan Ennis, a senior out of Sykesville, Maryland, was four for four last week, and he's one for one tonight. And Ennis has been on fire. You know, when you cut back on your turnovers and your kicking game starts coming around, Ron, you start to hang in a lot of ball games and give your chance, yourself a chance to win in tight ones like this one looks like it's going to be. Well, Maryland so far, as we told you, that was only their first penalty of the ball game. They have been virtually mistake free in this opening quarter. And as a result, they have 10 points and they lead the ball game by three. You can feel. When the time comes for Bobby to retire, how should that decision be made? Well said. Coach Lou Holtz, thanks so much for your time. We appreciate it. Always good visiting with you. So a penalty right there, erasing the situation after a beautiful kick return by Okendo. Maryland still with good field position, but they're faced with a first down and 20. And now they snap the ball from the 31-yard line. Lattimore continues to operate a tailback. Pass right over the middle. Got a man wide open inside the 20. Hayward Bay will take it inside the 10, and that's going to be a first down for the Maryland Terrapins, and good for 22 yards as Roger Williams finally put a stop on him. You know, Ron, we were talking yesterday with Sam Hollenbach. Could not be a better guy. Mechanical engineer major, and we talked about getting into his head a little too much and what Ralph Regan, who now serves as his own offensive coordinator, has been fighting all year. Trust your reads. And so far in this game, this young man is completely out of his head. He's feeling the moment, and right now, all the balls are being thrown right on time. And he is off to a really good start. You're right. First and goal from the nine. Ball is pitched back, and Lattimore fights his way to down around the five-yard line. And, folks, the interesting thing about this young man is he not only knows what he wants to do, he's a very good student, but he wants to get into car design. He's already done some internships, and he's so excited about it. And I told you yesterday, what an internship should be is some of the greatest things in the world because a kid really does find out, hey, this is what I want to do. And all of a sudden, the work in the classroom is not work. It's fun. And that's exactly what Ralph Regan pushes his players to do. They live in a great area, the capital of our country, pushes them to do internships to get out and figure out and start networking with some people they may need for their professional life. Off the corner, the ball 
on the throne quickly, and it's incomplete. Isaiah Williams, the intended receiver, but it was because of pressure coming on the quarterback, and that was Lawrence Timmons who was applying the heat. Well, when Sam Hollenbach is sitting at a computer designing a new drivetrain for GM, he's not going to have to worry about hits like this. Timmons, who played some defensive end last year, had a huge game in the ACC championship game, came off the edge, and Hollenbach needed to know that the protection did not account for him. He was face to his right and never saw number 84 come. A nice hit by Timmons. So it's third down. Third down and goal. The ball resting at the five-yard line. Turpin's lead it, 10-7. And we're about to go under 11 minutes to play until halftime. Retreats this time. Pass near sideline. Caught at the one. And touchdown to Hayward Bay. Darius Hayward Bay, a redshirt freshman out of Silver Spring, Maryland. Well, Hollenbach could not have thrown a better ball, Ron. Hayward Bay, who was a track guy in high school, he puts that ball perfectly over top of the coverage. Just an excellent job of firing that in. And that was after a big hit by Timmons. Ennis with the extra point of 10. Ball is down. Kick is up. And just like that, it is a 10-point lead by the Maryland Terrapins over Florida State. We'll take a timeout. 11-16 left until intermission. Possession. They say yes before he was knocked out of bounds. That's Isaiah Williams. Well, Hollenbach looked okay. He's very gimpy, though, Ron. Now, if you're Mickey Andrews, come after him a little bit. And, he, and, and Hollenbach's a better athlete than you may suspect. He's about a 4740 guy, but now slowed down. Would expect Andrews to maybe come after him. going to be a gain of very close to 10 yards on the first down play. Buster Davis on the tackle. Corey Jackson with another outstanding block from the fullback spot. Well, Corey Jackson came in. He's a true freshman from Huntington, excuse me, Morgantown, West Virginia. And when he met all the seniors, he said, I'm from Morgantown, West Virginia, and I like to hit people. And they all kind of looked at him and batted their eyes. Well, he now has the nickname Thumper because he showed up and did, in fact, like to hit people. Nice block that time. First down, the ball just inside the 25 yard line. And a power run by Lance Ball that time, tackled again by Buster Davis. Boy, and Maryland continues to run those tailbacks in and out of there. Uh, now Ball comes to the bench. Lattimore will check back in. And Josh Allen also has been a part of the scene tonight. Um, as you see the numbers on what they give up for the season and what they've given up tonight. Shorthanded already coming into the game. We've seen so many young players in there, but Ralph Region is testing this young defense with so many different formations and shifts and different personnel. From the shotgun play action, and he just throws this one away. Probably a very smart move on the part of Sam Hollenbach. Hollenbach just continues to gut it out on that bad right knee. Coach Friedgen trying to give him some easier throws who doesn't have to stand in the pocket forever. That time was going to be a swing pass to Lattimore, but Florida State has seen that play about three times and finally sniffed it out. Show right now, which is the third down situation, and to hold on to the football, they got to take it all the way down to the 13-yard line of Florida State. Clock shows 2.29 to play at Delinter Mission. And right now, the Seminoles can ill afford to give up a touchdown. Already down by 10. Pressure off the corner. Gets the pass away, and it is going to be incomplete. I think it hit Crummy, the offensive lineman, in the back of the head. Sure looked like that to me. But again, Friedgen calling a fairly conservative throw on third and eight. He's already in field goal range. We saw on the last drive they got themselves out of field goal range. So now they want to stay in it with the wind at their back. This should be 
a relatively easy kick. Field goal attempt coming from 39 yards away. Dan Ennis with the attempt. That's a good pass. Did he get all of it? Yes. And he squeezes it inside the right upright. So he's perfect tonight. Four of four last week. Two of two this evening. 20 to seven, our new score. Situation, 20 to seven. Maryland on top. Anton Smith back in the ballgame at tailback for Florida State. Lee sets going to go long. Far sideline, and this one is caught by Carr. Now, there is a situation where the wind holding the ball up was a huge help to a six, six and a half uh, receiver. Well, and this is one thing they've always been able to do with Carr, working on Josh Wilson, all five foot nine. And Wilson actually does a great job of coverage, but you're absolutely right, Ron. Ball slightly underthrown to begin with, but then it was underthrown by a lot more. And Carr is turning into a guy who just constantly makes big plays. They need a little more consistency out of him, though, but when he needs to make a big play, he does. Longest play of the night by Florida State. Sets in the pocket. Got a man over the middle. He can get it there. And it is through the hands of the receiver, Brandon Warren. And now here comes the flag in. Marcus Wimbish, I think, is the man who is going to be called for pass interference. Well, Brandon Warren, the true freshman, did not play. He's up limping already because he they thought he'd torn his hamstring against Duke. And he runs the seam route. And let's see if Wimbush does get there early. Yeah, the, it's the left hand on the hip, and the, the back judge has to call that, Ron. If he thinks that that hand is altering the route of the tight end, he's got to call that. Not much contact by Wimbush, but that left hand is going to get called every time. The coaches think that both Brandon Warren and Kaz Porosky, the tight ends, two young freshman tight ends, are going to not just be good, they think they're going to be very, very good. And Coach Friedgen, I think, has a right to complain. There wasn't much contact there, but you put your hand on the hip while the ball's in the air, and they'll, if they see it, they'll usually call it. Anton Smith, straight ahead, bounces off a tackler. Bolston is the man who had a hold on him, but now here comes a leap flag in. That one thrown behind the play on the far sideline. Face mask, five yard penalty against Maryland. Well, you get a guy, Greg Carr, making a play for you, and then you get two penalties in a row, and all of a sudden, Florida State, since really their, their touchdown drive is the only time they've had any type that's Henderson with the face mask. This is the first time since early in the first quarter that Florida State has had any type of momentum. Well, right now, Maryland is helping them. We'll see if the Seminoles can take advantage of it. Ralph Region has three timeouts. With the wind at their back, if they go back on offense, they need to start using some of those. That will give Florida State a first down as they spot it at the 18-yard line. Clock running, minute 20 seconds left until halftime. Lee, under pressure, throws this one away. That was Bolston who was applying the pressure. Conrad, a senior. And you just had that pressure there on that offensive line. This defense early in the year was having very difficult times getting pressure with four. That time, no blitz at all. Chris Koch does not have to call blitzes if Bolston's going to get that type of push in the middle and the clock stop, which is a help for Maryland. Charlie Graham, number 45, comes in at tight end for the Seminoles. Second down and 10. Straight ahead with the running play. It'll go to the, about the 15-yard line, and that's the end of the way. Nice job defensively by the Maryland Terrapins, and now that clock becoming extremely important. Under one minute, that's where we're about to go. 60 seconds exactly showing on the clock as a timeout was called. So Florida State with the timeout. And what do you see as far as the young quarterback, 60 seconds showing on the clock, and uh, what the Seminoles might go with right here? Well, you've got Greg Carr. 
who's six six and a half. I mean, we've already seen the jump ball once for him. I would think you take the shot into the end zone, and you'd, I think you'd be very happy, Ron. Quite frankly, with a field goal here, things just have not gone well for Florida State. So I think you take the one shot to Greg Carr. You can pick up the first down, but I think you go ahead and take the shot with the six, almost seven wide receiver in the corner of the end zone. Well. I, I couldn't agree with you more, and I have a feeling that's exactly what uh, Maryland is going to be looking for. Plus, the fact Brandon Warren, who is a big target, that uh, tight end who they threw the long pass to just a little while ago, he is noticeably limping. So I'm not sure that he is the uh, ideal target right now himself. Right, and, and remember, we've got a, a new quarterback for Florida State, and that fade throw, as long as you keep it in bounds, is a fairly easy throw. So I'll be surprised if Jeff Bowden does not go with the fade here to Carr. And, Try to get a uh, quick one on the board. Third down. And to keep the drive going, they need to take it to the eight and a half yard line. 60 seconds exactly left until halftime. Lee steps up, throws near sideline, got a man open. Touchdown, Florida State. And that's who he got it to, Grant Carr. If you got a target that large, just keep riding the horse until they won't let him go anymore. Well, and this was a really nice job by Xavier Lee. Watch, Carr gets inside. He's wide open. The safety never got over. But Lee had some pressure, and it took him a second to get back there. And the corner that side has got to get back. He, he released him to the safety, but a corner, or excuse me, a wide receiver that tall, you might want to get two guys on that big body. Says Mesha to attempt the extra point, trying to make it a six-point ball game. And he does so 53 seconds showing on the clock and just like that lightning a flag is down what well, Maryland had all the momentum in the world they were doing whatever they wanted to do and a personal foul has been called against Maryland And Ralph Regan, here comes. Well, I apologize. We are having a problem with our referee, Jack Childress's microphone. We'll try to get that taken care of. I'm sure that this man is disappointed at his team losing their composure somewhat, particularly on a 15-yard penalty. They had so many things going right for them, and then it was their mistakes. Florida State had been making them earlier, and because of it, the Seminoles got into the end zone. Pass interference, uh, a face mask got them in, and then Carr, who's his touchdown to catch ratio, of course, a guy this tall, and he always goes up and makes a play with his hands, but he is such a dangerous weapon in the red zone. Eight touchdowns on only 20 receptions. So you have to know if you're Maryland. Wow. That's the reason I yeah. said you know, that had to be the, the worst kept secret in the uh, <laughs> not just in the stadium, but in the state of Maryland as far as who were they, they were going to go for. Now, here's the situation, wind and all. The 15-yard penalty on the personal foul has stepped off on the kickoff. They're going to be kicking from the 50-yard line. If you're Coach Bob, do you take a chance on an onside kick? Do you just go ahead and squib it? I like the aggressive call and, and we all know that Bobby Bowden is not afraid to occasionally call an aggressive call 80 yards five plays and let's see what the Seminoles come up with as uh, Gano prepares to kick it off Josh Wilson the deep man for Maryland and here's the kick and it's on the ground. And it'll be Wilson from around the five yard line breaks one tackle and actually that was enough of a hit on him that he will go down and they'll say it'll be Maryland football at the 17 yard line and now with only 45 seconds left I say you not only play conservative you, you don't really do anything you don't dare want to give up more points this close to halftime if they would have gotten maybe 10 more yards on the return maybe. But I'm with you right now momentum has shifted and you don't want to give another reason for Florida State. Uh, listen Florida State has not played well defensively but they still have speed. 
And uh, I, I would be surprised if they're going to do anything Maryland except exactly what you're saying be very conservative and try to get the halftime with the lead. Well they've got a triple set of uh, receivers to the bottom of your screen. This is the worst starting position for Maryland on the night. And Hollenbach comes out from under center as they let the clock run down and now it's going to go out. And the crowd with a little bit of a boo, but I think Ralph Friedgen saying, hey, let's let's play the odds here. I, I like let's go into the locker room with a six point lead. So it is halftime and our score at halftime, a six point lead. This man thought that probably they were going to go in with a 13 point lead. But Florida State uh, came up with uh, with a nice offensive series. Let's go down to the field. Janine is with head coach Bobby Bowden. Coach, it was no secret that Maryland was going to run the ball quite a bit tonight. What adjustments do you need to make with your run defense? Well, usually, if people run the ball pretty good, you need to tackle. You know, it's usually about as simple as that. We need to quit missing tackles. Okay, Xavier Lee's been under some pressure, but you're only down by six. So what are you going to say to these guys at halftime to spur the uh, motivation on offense? Well, I think they have to kick off to us, and nothing would help more if we could take it and drive it in and get back in this ball game, you know? And... Uh, we just got 30 more minutes of fighting. Thanks, Coach. 15 as Florida State scored late in that first half. And if you had to guess, what do you think Bobby Bowden said to his uh, troops at halftime? I think the biggest thing they need to do, like he said, tackle a little better in the run game. But uh, yeah. offensively, Anton Smith ran so well in that first half. So you've got two weapons you can exploit. Greg Carr on the outside and Anton Smith, I bet, as much as he talked to his players, that's what he said to his coaches and his son, Jeff Bowden, let's exploit those two guys. Well, Carr is really a weapon, isn't he? Yeah, it's almost like we were just talking at the break, having a seven foot two center with six foot six guys in the paint trying to defend him. I would expect, and, and Xavier Lee has shown that he can throw that ball, under throw it, and he threw a very nice ball for the touchdown as well. Let him throw it. Ekakezu prepares to uh, kick it off. It's a foot into this one, and as you can tell, the breeze is still. Kind of stiff, and it. Let's take a look at game track. This is uh, exactly what happened back in the first half, as uh, Gronkowski catches this touchdown pass in the corner, puts him up seven to nothing. Then Hayward Bay, but here's Carr at six six or just a little bit over. He is very very difficult to cover, as Ed said. If you're only five nine. Lorenzo Booker opens the second half at tailback, gets the ball, bites his way out across the 25 to the 26 yard line. Lorenzo Booker is a captain, and I would assume that one of the reasons he is going to get uh, the nod as far as playing time, but you're exactly right. Anton Smith was very difficult to stop in that first half of play. Anton Smith last year was a little bit lost because of Booker and Leon Washington, but. Uh, Booker, a guy with great speed, especially when he gets it to the outside. Well, he is going to have the first down on his uh, second carry here in this half. And let's go down and check in with Janine Edwards on the sideline. Well, Ron, I had a chance to catch up with Coach Ralph Friedgen coming back from the half, and I asked him what he said to his guys back there. He said, well, he said our tackling needs to be a lot better. I can tell you that. He said, I think our defense is okay, but we can play better. He said, what worries me is that I think Florida State has made some adjustments on offense and defense. Their quarterback looks a lot more comfortable than he did in the first quarter, and that's got me worried. Well, I can understand. Good little uh, stutter step there, and it's going to be worth 10 yards on the carry. Eric Henderson, or Aaron Henderson, I should say, comes over to make the tackle. But uh, Booker running very, very well to open the second half. Well, we, interesting, we talked to Jeff Bowden during the week, what he said about his offensive line. He said they're, they're not quite finishing, and our receivers on the outside are not finishing. What he means by that is at the end of a block, when a guy's going to make the tackle, You've got to continue to drive through him so he can't make it. And they're starting to do that a little bit better tonight. Counter Trey looks for a spot to run, and he'll be stopped after a gain of three. Stopped by Holloway and Wimbush. Aaron Henderson made that tackle on the play prior to this, and it's interesting. Playing the linebacker position and his size, Aaron is 6'3, 242 pounds. 
he was recruited. He came to school as a quarterback. And uh, he said that, you know, he loves the fact that they have put him on the defensive side of the ball. He said those meetings early on with the quarterbacks have really helped him. He's got a couple of interceptions, one return for a touchdown because he knows what the quarterbacks are looking at down the field. Straight ahead, big opening, then it closed up. And I'll tell you, if that arm doesn't go out by Wesley Jefferson, he would have not only been in the secondary, but Booker might have been headed toward the end zone. This was a nice job by the offensive line. Watch the hole. Well, I think it's pretty obvious. Excellent job by the center, John Frady. Just knocked the defensive tackle clear out of the way. But it looks to me like this offensive line was challenged at halftime. They ran fairly well in the first half. But these are much bigger holes, Ron, than we had seen in the first two quarters. Well, let's see if they are up to it with a third down and two. Booker straight ahead ran into his own man and on a second effort still didn't get it. He lost his footing and it was Wesley Jefferson who hit him first knocked him back and that was just enough to get help from the teammates and uh, then Henderson was there to finish him off. Well and all the offensive players from Florida State staying on the field saying go for it. I don't think there's any question that Bobby Bowden's going to go for it. If I had seen my offensive line getting that much push and those many big holes. I think I'd leave him out there for this one, Ron. Well, it looks like they're going to do it. The ball is sitting squarely on the 50-yard line to keep the drive alive. They've got to go to the 49. Florida State calls a timeout. Coach Bowden just walked over to look at and see exactly how far they'd have to go. So we'll take a timeout. Score the same 20 to 14. Big decision. Fourth down and one for the state. Team was on the left. They've gone back to the sidelines. Here comes the offensive team sprinting out on the field. It is fourth down and one for the state. Xavier Lee will go under center this time. Hands it off. Hit behind the line of scrimmage is Surratt, and he is not going to have it. Navarre is the man who broke through and made the stick. Well, Chris Kosh has been moving his defensive line, slanting, going into gaps a lot, and that time, as a flag goes down. Well, that was thrown by the referee pretty late. This may be a personal foul. Unsportsmanlike. At the end of the down, number 32, removal of the helmet. The 15 yard penalty. Wow, Joe Surratt, the fullback. Who had run the ball? It was a short handoff. Excellent job. Good penetration. That was a pinch. He would have touched by Navarre. Absolutely. The offensive line didn't see Navarre come inside. Now at 15, onto the missed fourth down situation. And that ball will be placed down at the 33 yard line of Florida State. And that's a gamble by Chris Kosh, the defensive coordinator. If you pinch your defensive line and they happen to be running a sweep, it's an easy pickup, but he gambled and won on that one. Lance Ball will be operating at tailback. We'll see if the Terps can take advantage of this uh, situation where they hold a fourth down. Gets the handoff straight ahead. Tiptoes his way for three, now maybe four yards. Roll is the man who came over to make the tackle. Corey Jackson with a block of Buster Davis on that play to pave the way for the yardage that he did pick up. Boy, we've said Corey Jackson a lot tonight, haven't we, Ron? Yep, He's sure a have. Tough, tough young man. It's, uh, Maryland and West Virginia always battle for recruits, but it's rare that Maryland goes into Morgantown and gets a guy out of there in high school in Morgantown. Well, he's lived up to his nickname, Thumper. Doesn't get to carry the ball very much, but loves to block. Get at the line of scrimmage. That's good penetration by Lawrence Timmons. Here is a young man, is a junior out of Florence, South Carolina, that the defensive coaches for Florida State really think the world of. Timmons makes a lot happen. He gets to play strong safety at times, but he said where he really likes is defensive end. This time as the fullback. It's taken up Timmons who was lined up almost outside on a slot receiver came into that hole again. He read where the running back was going and Timmons who had to 
obviously sit behind Ernie Sims, so that's why they had to move him around so much. Now Mickey Andrews put him at home at Sam Linebacker. Josh Allen into the ball game at tailback. Third down. The line to make is the 23. Hollabach throws it, got it complete at the 10. Spin move at the 5. Touchdown, Hayward Bay. Well, for a guy Hollenbach who only attempted nine passes last week against NC State, he's now nine for 14, and he's been very sharp tonight. Ennis with the extra point attempt. He's got it. So the gamble by Florida State. And a gamble on defense by Maryland pays off. Then a 15-yard penalty, and all of a sudden they got a lead, 27 to 14. 24 left to play, third quarter, and it is Maryland who gets on the scoreboard first here in the second half. Florida State gambled on a fourth down and one, and Maryland gambled with what they did with their defensive players at the line of scrimmage pinching in stopped the play then a 15 yard penalty and all of that led to seven points for the Turks. <laughs> Running with the ball to the 30 and all the way out now to the 35 yard line that's going to be a gain of 15 yards as Holloway finally forced Xavier Lee out of bounds and this is exactly what Lee gives you Weatherford would not have been able to give you tonight uh, of course Weatherford not playing because of the tendonitis in his right foot that he began feeling Wednesday morning when he woke up and those bootlegs you've got to have a quarterback who can pull it down and run and Lee was the guy who could do that tonight not Weatherford the amazing thing is Lee is a very large man with almost 230 pounds and he's 6'4. Straight ahead with the handoff, leaping his way forward out over the 40 yard line. Jefferson on the stop. And uh, Anton Smith in the carry there. Let's check in again on the sideline with Janine. Well, Ron and Ed, I'm over here on the Florida State sideline, and it has gotten very solemn on this side of the field. The guy's very, very quiet, almost in stunned disbelief at the way this game is look appears to be slipping from their grasp Buster Davis the undisputed leader of the team has been talking very intently with Bowden and defensive coordinator Mickey Andrews Anton Smith again and he's going to be in the grasp of Dre Moore a big junior out of Charlotte North Carolina to put a stopper on him more 6'4 312 I want to go back to something you mentioned earlier in the broadcast about nine seniors on Florida State. These are the moments. They're only down 27-14 with 7.50 left in the third. And young guys just haven't been through this. Your freshmen, your two freshmen, retro freshmen, they won, most of them won just about every game in high school. And this is just not, a, this is such a new position for them. And they're only one of six on third down conversions tonight. They need to take it to the 45-yard line if they're going to keep this drive going. Lee retreats, now steps up. He's got room to run, and he is going to, and he'll have the first down plus about eight more yards around the 42-yard line. Aaron Henderson forced him out of bounds. Well, I like what Lee did there where how he took a very long time before he came out of the pocket. Because the routes were so far downfield, he's able to pick up 13 yards. If he took off earlier than this, Ron, I believe that Henderson or Jefferson may have been able to make the tackle before the first down, but because he hung in the pocket so long, it opened up the secondary for more yardage. So first down again. Florida State, as they convert their second third down play of the evening. Good protection, now it breaks down. And he squares his shoulders, throws complete at the 30-yard line to Greg Carr. 
but you can tell that he slowed down to come get his body under control before he threw the pass. Gardner trying to cover. Carr did an excellent job of coming back to the quarterback that time. A big frame. Scramble drill you want the near side receiver to come back if you have an inside receiver you want him to take off so you maybe can take a shot but Carr did an excellent job seeing Lee coming back to him presenting his numbers for the draw. Two wide receivers to the right top of your screen swings this one out and he's got that to Surratt and the big fullback's going to be tackled after a gain of one. middle with the run not much doing for Anton Smith and now it's going to be third down and long as David Holloway came over to make the tackle. Well one thing we have not seen tonight from Florida State is a quarterback draw and the way Lee is running right now I'd go four wides maybe empty the backfield or even leave it back into lead block for him and the way he is running I think I think that uh, Maryland may be right for the picking with a quarterback draw. Well, let's see. Eighth play. It started back at the 20 yard line. Third down, Florida State. Line to make the 21 of Maryland. Antoine Smith straight ahead, hit from behind, and a flag is down at the line of scrimmage as Bolston got penetration. And now let's see, had somebody lined up offside defensively? No, I think they got Corey Niblock again. For, Just like, yeah. Yep. Movement. But they should get third down over. Right? Absolutely. Prior to the snap, there was a false start right guard of the offense. It's a five yard penalty. It's still third down. Exactly right. Niblock, but they, uh, you be able to. Yeah, Maryland wanted to play. Of course. <laughs> of course they did. Yeah, that ball, though. So that's the reason I said immediately, yeah, exactly. hey, but the good news is for Florida State fans, they get one more snap. You got Greg Carr down at the bottom. They'll have a height advantage against any corner in the country. And a step up. Drills it. Got it complete. And that is Davis. And Chris Davis has the first down at the 19 yard line. J.J. Justice, a junior out of Lisbon, Connecticut, came over to make the tackle. But that was a nice job of blocking by that offensive front, and it's good for 16 yards. What an excellent job, Carr here. And watch as he runs down this, the outside. Well, now they've got the safety over here. So Davis just comes right back inside. This is a great call and an excellent throw, knowing that Maryland was going to double, double cover the taller receiver to the outside. Play action swings this one out. Davis going to be hit behind the line of scrimmage. And that's going to be a loss. And Florida State, on the, the last couple of uh, first down plays, has played behind the change, which is not the ideal situation. As Navar was there defensively to make the tackle for the Terps. Boy, Xavier Lee has shown me enough, though, Ron. Let this let this young man operate in the shotgun. Keep him in the pocket. I, he just he looks for a guy who's been running second team for the better part of a year and a half. It looks like he's been starting every game. He just, I know they haven't put up a ton of points so far, but every time he's dropped back to pass, he's made good choices, even when he's had to run. Plenty of time on the play clock. So we get this one sorted out with uh, another flag being thrown. So now that to me is extremely big because I talk about Florida State playing behind the chains. They had a second down at about 12 and a half yards. Second down <laughs> at seven and a half. Oh, a whole lot of difference. Yeah. And, uh, and, and uh, what this opens you up for, Rod, is what I've been talking about. We have not seen a whole lot of quarterback runs. Of course, Xavier Lee, a better runner than Drew Weatherford. 
I think you start taking advantage of that. And this is the down and distance where you can. Dumica Atkins comes in at center, number 58, sophomore out of Sarasota. Steps up, Jill. Got a man, touchdown. Davis, I mean, unattended, right over the middle, 17 yards. And pow, the Seminoles come right back to answer. Well, once again, Xavier Lee. He looked great in the pocket. He sat there, he saw the blown coverage, saw Davis come wide open, good protection, throws it right on the money. Gary Sismasia to attempt the extra point, trying to make it once again a six point ball game. And he does. So, with three minutes and 42 seconds left in the third quarter, a score by Maryland, and then the Seminoles answer 27 21. Terps on top. Let's take a break. Davis scores. Comes into tailback, weaves his way, comes out across the 25 to around the 26 yard line. Dre Moore makes the tackle. And I'll tell you what, it's interesting what <laughs> Coach Spurrier did at uh, South Carolina. But he went to the young man and said, Hey, how about playing some quarterback for me? <laughs> well, Savelle Newton was one of the best quarterbacks in the country. And, uh, Coach Springer got there and thought, you know, you may be able to help us more on receiver. <laughs> they're, they're not looking back now at that chance. No, uh, Steve said it, it, he thinks it makes the play caller uh, no, far brighter <laughs> when the quarterback has mobility. Third down, they need to take it to the 30 yard line. Blitz is coming, picked up nicely. He's going to have to hurry. Gets it away and has it complete. The tackle is going to be made around the 35. It's Greg Carr, but that's twice tonight that Carr has come back when his quarterback was in jeopardy and helped him out. Unbelievable arm strength by Xavier Lee. Watch him by the time, by the time, and backing it up, just flicks it down the field. An excellent throw, and Carr having a whale of a ball game. Five receptions, 84 yards, and that great touchdown. But again, Carr, they're looking for consistency from this young man. And every time tonight when his quarterback has been in trouble, he's made a play for him. Yeah, he really has. The reason for his five receptions. Blitz off the corner. He's going to go long. They pick it up, and it is caught by Davis. And Davis down the sideline, still fighting, and they'll be knocked out of bounds inside the 12 yard line. And it's Isaiah Gardner that they have picked on again. Xavier Lee is, is, well, I don't know that you could have thought he would have played any better tonight. Puts it to the outside. Davis. He was on the outside. He should have stayed out there as he started to work back to the inside on Gardner. But that is an awfully long throw, Ron. And Xavier Lee, two plays in a row, demonstrating great arm strength. 54 yards on that pass play right there. And uh, Florida State looks now at a first down and goal. The ball resting at the 10 yard line. And a timeout called by the officials. And it's because with the 54 yard play, it uh, took the took chain the gang a, yeah. a long time to get down the field. But Boy, of course, since it's first and goal, they don't have to pull the 10 yard chain up. And a little unlucky for Florida State that they can't pick up the first down. Yeah. Anton Schmidt spins his way. He's going to have three yards, maybe a little bit more. David Holloway on the stop. Right, now, don't wait for third down. To use your quarterback. <laughs> you know, I, 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 guys get to first and goal from the 10, and they'll run and they'll run, and then third down. Guess what? We're going to throw. This is a throwing down for Florida. And I think Greg Carr is the guy you look for. I, listen, I know everybody in the stadium knows you may throw it to a 6 6 guy, but bring him down to the bottom. Here he comes down to the bottom of your screen, and he's solo. Absolutely solo. Well, let's see if they do. That's it. Bay route near side, and that ball is overthrown. And Carr thinking that uh, he had the defender on his back. The official said no. Josh Wilson on the cover. Well, he goes to come inside, and he stopped his route, Rod. If he stays on his route, that's right where Xavier Lee is throwing the ball. I don't know why he slowed down. And you can ask for the call all you want, but if he runs through that, he may have gotten the call if he continued on his route. Yeah. Third down, third down and goal. 
the ball at the seven yard line. Maryland 27, Florida State 21. 8.58 to play in our ball game. Blitz coming off the corner. Gonna have to hurry. Drills it. And in and out of the hands of the receiver. Knocked away by Josh Wilson on an outstanding defensive play. Wilson got in there and Greg Carr has position on it. Good route by Carr. Good jump. Boy, Wilson stuck right around to the inside and got that hand up. You're looking at that left hand, I'm aren't looking you? looking at that yeah. left hand, and he's really fortunate he yeah. didn't get a flag. Yeah, a lot of times, even if they see it, but boy, that, he, he got the right hand right around. So Sismatia to attempt the field goal, and they're going to place this one down at the 14-yard line to a 24-yard attempt. Good pass. Kick is good. 8.49 left in our ballgame and a new score. Turpins with a three-point lead, 27-24. There's situation. We're down to one minute and 12 seconds. Florida State is driving, but they have just burned their final timeout as uh, the young quarterback just simply forgot about the clock. And they had to call it as the 25 second clock had gone all the way down to two. Uh, they trail by three, but the field position is absolutely wonderful. And right now, if I'm Florida State, I'm not even thinking about the field goal because Greg Carr does have them so preoccupied with what he's doing I think they're one of a couple of guys that could catch the ball and get into the end zone I would have Greg Carr run to the post and have Davis trailing behind him run the drag and he may walk in because they are over the top on Greg Carr because of the damage he's done on the outside and Davis so quick to the inside you've got to be very careful though Ron anything that's going to make the clock run if you're Florida State you're going to have to hurry up or you may run out of time and have to kick the field goal yep this is the 11th play of the drive coming up. It started back at the 15-yard line following a 10-yard penalty add-on. So they had the scrimmage from the 15-yard line. So they had had to go a very long way. On this drive, adding on to what they already had, Florida State, 461 total yards in offense this evening. Here they come to the line of scrimmage, trailing by three, 27-24. Xavier Lee sets deep in the pocket, drills it out here in the flat, gets it to his tight end who will step out of bounds, and Brandon Warren is going to be out at the 15 and a half yard line. The clock's a little tricky here, Ron. You don't want to have any plays in front of the sticks or that don't go out of bounds because then you're in a hurry up. You want everything beyond the sticks, and then you might have a couple of shots in the end zone, and with great car out there on the outside. I think if you get the first down, you get two, maybe three shots. Here's the situation as you've got both Davis and Carr split out wide to the left. But he's looking the other way. Going to be caught, and he threw the ball. That's going to be grounded. Oh, my goodness. What? I mean, that's just, that is inexperience and just not a smart thing. Now you have taken your team maybe out of field goal range by doing that. Well, he was going to be sacked anyway. Yeah, but you don't want to add. That's a loss of down also. <laughs> so it means it's going to be third down, and look where the ball is going to be brought back as David Hollowed it. Yeah, excellent job by Holloway. We had intentional branding, number nine of the offense. That is an intentional, that's an illegal forward pass to conserve time. Five yards from the spot of the pass, lost it down. Will start on the ready See, it starts yeah, on the ready also, and, and they need to go. It's 61 seconds is what we have left in the ball game, and it's third down. And remember, with the wind at their back, Sismatia can kick. I think he can kick from this distance, but you'd like him a little closer now. Here we go. Third down. Pressure from the outside. Lee steps up, throws the ball, got a man, and in and out of the hands of Carr, and I think the defensive back who cut in front of him was enough of a distraction. That was Isaiah Gardner that he couldn't hold on to the football. I think he got this ball in there. And remember, in college, receivers can come back in. Boy, he put that right on his back number, Ron. Yep. That ball needs to be caught. And then you'd be able to take three, maybe four shots into the end zone. 
But now they've got Maryland should have called a timeout. Absolutely. As Sismatia is lining up to try what is going to be about a 47 yard field goal. Well, that ball could not have been thrown better by Xavier Lee. Sismatia, his longest, 53 yards against Rice. That was a career long. 33 of 43 coming into tonight's ball game. Ralph Friedgen looks on, and if Florida State is not able to tie this game and send it into overtime or get an opportunity to win it, the one play that you have to put an asterisk by the grounding by the young quarterback. Inexcusable. I don't care how young you are, that you just don't do that. Well, it was a penalty that hurt him, backing him up even more because they knew he was doing it to conserve time. But let's go back to another penalty for Maryland. Lined up in the neutral zone yeah. on fourth and inch yeah. when it looked like they stopped them. So well, that's if Florida State wins. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You check that asterisk yeah. right. Both teams going back and forth. But the kicking game for Florida State this year so consistent. Tismesha has now hit eight kicks in a row. And with the wind in his back, I don't know that the distance makes much of a difference. He just needs to get this thing airborne. In his career, 40 to 49 yards. He is 10 of 13. The ball on the near hash mark. <laughs> now Maryland's going to try to ice him again. That's their second. They still got one more. Uh, and this major rolls his head. And if you don't think this doesn't get into a guy's head, you're wrong. Look what happened. Mm. And you remember this as well as anybody. Nobody is around him. He doesn't want anybody around him, and they don't want to be around him. He's just back there walking on his own. Well, if you're the last guy to talk to him and he misses it, you feel like you jinxed him. Yeah, exactly. I want to be that guy. <laughs> so, situation if you uh, have just tuned in, 49 seconds left in the ball game. It is Maryland 27 and Florida State 24. This is Mesha. This is well within reach. His longest career, 53 yards, trying to tie it. And, and you may think that Maryland should conserve some timeouts because they may have enough time for offense, but they'll be going into the win. Yeah. So if, if Sismasia makes it, Ralph's probably going to take a knee. They, they, don't, they wouldn't want a turnover, so I wouldn't be surprised if they used their last one now. 46 yards. The pass. The ball is blocked. Celebration has started. No flags yet, but there's almost got to be one for excessive celebration as the entire bench unloaded and came onto the field. And it's Navar, Jeremy Navar, who got the block. Great push in the middle. And this is something that the defensive coaches have been working on on the left side. Excellent push, and they got sideways and got their hands up. A little bit of a low kick by Sismasia, but now, Ron, no timeouts for Florida State. This ball game is over. Navarre has had a couple of huge plays defensively in this ball game tonight, but none of that one right there even bigger. And Navarre does a great job of turning his body sideways. As you get push, you get a slippery guy in there. He got sideways, got that left hand, and knocked it back. So the clock starts 40 seconds down to 39 and Florida State with no timeouts left. They can't stop it. Hollenbach looking up at the 25 second clock. He still got about eight seconds there. Takes it and then goes down to a knee at 20 seconds. They don't have to run another play. Maryland will wind up with back to back home victories over the Florida State Seminoles as Bobby Bowden is going to start four and four the worst start since 1976 that was his first season down in Tallahassee and Ralph Regions offensive plan tonight could not have been better a team that had relied so heavily on the run Hollenbach got hot there for a little while and he rode him as much as he could ride him but it was uh, special teams ultimately that won the game for Maryland.
So our final score, Maryland 27 and Florida State 24. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Along with Ed Cunningham and Janine Edwards, I'm Ron Franklin. Thank you.